Hello lovely people and welcome back. This video is sponsored by Surfshark because babies are expensive. Today we're going to be talking about baby wearing and more specifically baby wearing when you have a body that doesn't quite fit the mould. Parenting with a twist, if that's your vibe and you're new here, then subscribe. Even tiny babies can start to feel incredibly heavy if you carry them around all day. But sometimes you just don't have a choice. Our little one Rupert is five months old and currently has his first cold. He's gone from, leave me alone mummy, I am exploring this amazing toy in my mouth for the 80th time, to, don't you dare break skin to skin contact. Thus, there's been a lot of carrying him around recently, which can be an issue for me as I have connective tissue disorder that means whilst my big muscles are switched on, my connective tissue is laughably switched off. That's a massive oversimplification. But if you'd like more information on Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, you can click the card in the corner of your screen or go to the link in the description. That gave me a scoliosis in my spine, i.e. it curves in ways it shouldn't and means that when it comes to carrying a baby around, the safest thing for me is a sling. And it's imperative that it fits properly, which is why I called in an expert. Lizanne from Mother Racker, who runs an inclusive carrying and parenting hub with a huge sling library and training in even advanced techniques. Thank goodness, because ha, I needed the help. I can't take it off. <laughs> So I have a double scoliosis mm -hmm. and at the top it goes to the right and at the bottom it goes to the left. Okay. What that kind of means is that on the right I have a winged scapula. Mm -hmm. So my shoulder blade goes that way at the left and that way at the right. Mm -hmm. Which makes things a little more difficult with a strap. It kind of has to be longer on this side. Yeah. And then on my waist it goes in much more and this side just goes straight down. Okay. But also there's like a massive hunk of muscle here. Yeah. When there isn't one over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I also have to worry about then my rib cage tilts. Mm -hmm. And I worry about my bony rib cage going into his little belly. I haven't done forward facing with him yet. He's not old enough to do it yet. Wonderful. So that's fine. Don't We're worry. good then. We're fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Perfect. They need to be four months old yeah. with good head control and tall enough so that their chin clears the top of the carrier. Your ribs from inside your body will not hurt him. Okay. Even if they're a bit pokey. Touch these ribs. They're, <laughs> they're pretty pokey. The way he's going to be sitting on you when we have him positioned at the right height, it won't be an issue. The nearest thing to there will be his knees. Okay. And that's all right, because he doesn't even have kneecaps yet. He'll have a little blob of gristle, which eventually will grow and harden into a kneecap bone, but they don't have kneecaps. That's why they crawl and doesn't hurt. It's my favorite fact to tell new parents. Oh my <laughs> God. No one has any idea. But yeah, Hi. so when you get all these Instagram ads trying to sell you like knee pad covers for when they're crawling, well, I don't buy them for those yet. It doesn't but... have kneecaps. The only worry would be if the pressure of where he's positioned would then rub on your ribs and that might hurt you. But it's being mindful of where he's positioned and how that feels on your body. Sure. And that's the same consideration for everyone. Excellent. We've got lots of pretty things to play with. <laughs> we do. So that's why I needed the help. And if you'd like to know more about my scoliosis and how I deal with it, mainly thanks to a corset, you can click the card in the corner. Now, onto slings. We're going to be going through a number of slings here, all different types, some of which were gifted to me by the people who make them, but that definitely does not sway my opinion. And in fact, I'm really slightly disappointed that the one I wanted to love didn't work. So keep watching until the end to see what worked and what didn't. But before that, let's have a brief check-in with Surfshark, sponsor of this portion of today's video. So, it's 2021, you probably know what a VPN is, but <clears throat> unlocking content from around the world isn't all a VPN can do. With Surfshark, you can protect your data and identity from thieves, protect your privacy online, publish without a geotag. Yeah, yeah, did you know when you publish things, it has a geotag, even if you think it doesn't, it does. Keep your web browsing private, prevent internet throttling, and this one I only learned recently. Save money when booking plane tickets in hotel rooms. Just change your location a bit and boom, you will find the cheapest country to book from, even if you are booking a hotel, in the next town over to where you are right now. 
So Claudia is currently protesting the clocks changing, the darkening of the days by obsessively planning our next holiday in the sun. So we used to have this thing where we'd go away abroad every year for my birthday. It's January 25th, exactly one month after Christmas day. Yes, you can mark it in your calendars. Obviously that, that hasn't happened recently, thanks COVID. We're hoping, hopefully, maybe, we'll get to go next year. I mean, I've got my COVID booster planned. Click the link in the description and use code JESSICA for 83% off Surfshark plus four months extra for free. Yes, I said four. It's a Black Friday deal. It's different this month. Four, four months extra for free. Okay, so let's start with stretchy slings. So we used this when he was really little mm -hmm. um, in that little like froggy position, but then he got bigger and wasn't quite as comfortable getting put in it because I didn't really know how to wrap it around myself, but still leave enough space for his bigger body. Mm -hmm. That's fine, that's absolutely fine. The method I'm gonna show you works with every single brand of stretchy wrap and every okay. single size of baby. As he keeps growing, whatever brands you might use, it will work. Excellent. Okay. I also really love the idea of this wrap because I think like weird body shape, whatever shape you are. Exactly, yeah. Really the useful. great thing about stretchy wraps, about woven wraps, about ring slings, about may dive, is that they will fit your body regardless. And it fits parents who are different shapes and sizes. Buckle carriers, on the other hand, they're like jeans. You have to find <laughs> the one that fits you. So you find your bit of marker, okay? Should be on the end there, there we oh. go and it just unravels beautifully like that. That goes over your chest and you use your chin to pin it in place. That's it, there we go. And then it's your top hem of one side, round behind your back to the other hand. So you go under, that's it, round to then come over the shoulder. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And then gather it all up so we get rid of the extra slack. Top hem, round behind your back to the other shoulder again. Take both your verticals and you're gonna go straight down through your horizontal. Okay. Take one piece in each hand, cross them over, take it behind your back, and then check the length of your tails. So if they're longer than your knees, then it's a risk when you're going up and down stairs. <laughs> so you just cross uh, them over and then bring them in front and tie it off either on the front or on your hip. Cool, so the next step is a step that a lot of people miss out because it's not in any instructions, which is very irritating for consultants. We need to get rid of the excess slack. However, there is lots of hidden slack. And so to get rid of it all, you reach down behind your back and you pull it out, up and forward to find all the extra slack. Are you, I think you made it. Oh wait, actually yeah. Yeah. I was gonna be like, you're massively stronger than me. <laughs> no, no, okay. There's still a lot in there. Where the stretch starts is where their knees are gonna end up. So that's my maximum stretch, but my stretch starts here. Yeah, about there. Which, considering the height of your torso and how big Rupert is, is probably about right Excellent. with the way you want him. I am very tall. <laughs> so she's nailed it first time. You pull it back slightly until your thumbs are in line with your nips just under your chest. Then you retie your knot to get rid of the excess slack. That makes so much. <laughs> okay, okay, I see. Cool, right, so now we're the right size, we need some babies. <gasps> Baby time. <laughs> right, so now that we have babies, you're gonna bring Rupert up onto one shoulder, ideally arms over, elbow up, hand under his bum. Fab, then you slip your hand under the other side, Pull it out, catch his foot, and pop it into his knee. And you swoosh him round to the other shoulder. There we go, and you come under the other side, into his foot, into his knee. And then one hand under his bum, one hand on his head. You're gonna slide him down to hook those knees up nice and high and get his bum nice and low. And then if you let go of his bum, keep one hand on top of his shoulders and just bounce him ever so gently, bounce your knees to let him sink into that. There we go. That's where you want him. Okay. Okay, so what we're looking for is that lovely M shape. So we start at the ankle, up to the knee, down to the bum, up to the knee, and down again, okay? Inside hem, all the way over the bum to the other knee. And then you're gonna grab this side yeah. and pull it all the way over as well, yeah. like so, so it's nice and wide. That's it. And then sometimes their knees drop a little bit. So that's 
Let's get the knees back up there, Rupert. Good, lad. Now we need to clear his airways. Whichever side he's looking, you come under that shoulder to grab the fabric through in front of his face and you pull it back over your own shoulder. Oh, Bubs. Is it Dave? Did Dave put you off? Probably did, didn't he? Cool, so last step is you come all the way under his bum that we wedged right up yeah. and you grab that horizontal pass from the beginning. That's it. Once you've got it, you're going to bring it over each leg like a rope and leave it under his bum and his knees. There we go. And a second leg. And then the top hem, you bring that up. And then, yeah, what you can do if his legs keep dropping, you can grab his shins and push them up, cuddle more around you like that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So to take them out, you unpeel the banana. So the top layer comes down, unpeel the next layer, lift him out. Okay, so this baby born sling, I actually bought on a whim mm -hmm. because we got told to buy the baby bouncer, which has never worked for us yet. But whilst buying it, the website was like, hey, if you buy the bouncer, you buy the sling for less. And I was like, well, it's pink. How could I say no? Exactly. Oh, it's a delightful colour pink. It is a stunning I, shade. I do really enjoy it. Yeah. I had just been struggling with the tri-buckle sling that had arrived the previous day. And then this arrived in the post. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness. I took it out of the packet and I was like, I mean, you know, this is just a just a random thing that I bought on a whim. I didn't realize that it could just be this simple and easy. And like, I didn't need, I didn't need to have fancy hands that worked properly, like other people's hands. <laughs> I could have my own little weird hands that do their own little weird thing. And oh, it just all slots in together. Mm -hmm. And they're fantastic when your baby is tiny and doesn't weigh very much. Yes, <laughs> it gave me such joy. I have no idea how I would now fit Rupert in here because this space is miniature. There's a lot of things about the baby on that people would have heard on the internet. For smaller babies, it's absolutely fine. The main thing is that it's a narrow-based carrier. This means that it doesn't support the baby fully from knee to knee. Babies who are supported fully from knee to knee from birth what it does is that gravity then helps to deepen those hip sockets, those hip joints. So when they're born, they're quite shallow, which allows babies to actually come out. And then in order for them to be able to walk by the time they're one, that joint needs to have deepened and secured, and mm -hmm. then they're able to walk. The deeper that gets, the sooner they achieve their milestone. So when it achieves a certain level, they can roll over. When it does another level, they'll start trying to crawl. Once it's deep enough, they will crawl. When it's even deeper, they'll start standing. Carriers that support them fully knee to knee with their curved spine, that M shape, it will help accelerate that process. But that's not to say that using this would slow it down. Okay. It doesn't. There's also lots of stories going around on the internet about how baby Bjorn carriers can damage babies' hips. This has been taken from a study done in 2012 in Canada um, with a small group of babies. They ended up being four groups. So there were babies with hip dysplasia and babies without hip dysplasia. Within those two groups, half were given narrow base carriers mm -hmm. and half were given wide based carriers, knee to knee carriers. What they found was that the babies with no hip dysplasia, there was no difference in their hip growth sure by using this carrier they were they were fine they were all normal they were fine but the babies with hip dysplasia that had used the wide base carriers they were on par with the ones with no hip dysplasia so it oh. actually helped their hip dysplasia the babies with hip dysplasia that were using the narrow base carriers were as expected for babies with hip dysplasia so it didn't make it worse but it also didn't make it better there was okay. a tiny fraction where it got worse but because of that the sling police, keyboard warriors, viciously attack and they say, no, you can't use narrow base carriers. It's going to damage your baby's hips. And it won't. If there but is no damage, damage, no damage was caused. It was just a yeah. natural yeah. effect. It was in a couple, it was slightly worsened, but there was already an existing hip condition. If there's no existing hip condition, then they're fine to use. Also, because it's a harness style carrier in that you put it on first, and then put baby in, it doesn't actually spread their weight over your torso. Mm -hmm. So whilst I don't recommend this for adults to walk around with, yes. it is actually perfect for wheelchair users. Yay! 
to wear their babies in, especially facing outwards. The reason for that is that because it's nice and narrow, when we pop Dave in, and then when Jessie sits down, it sits perfectly on her lap. And then it doesn't matter about the weight being on her back because she's sitting and his weight is on her lap, which means you've got the prettiest seat belt in all the world for him. Cool, so. Jumping. Yep. Yeah. Have him on your front. The number one golden rule when we're outward facing babies, no matter what single carrier you're using, is to never let them sleep facing outwards. No. When they're facing us, they will slump on our chest. We can monitor their airways we know that they're safe. When they're facing outwards, if they slump, that chin can drop to their chest and that can close the airways. Wow, Dave, you are much heavier than Rupert yeah. was when I was using this sling with him. Because all the weight is in the shoulders, this model of the Bjorn, it hurts everyone's back. But as that. I said, they're fantastic for wheelchair users. It's lovely. And as he gets bigger and bigger, because there's no waistband, for him to sit on and get in your way, mm. he would just sit lower and lower until he is properly sitting on your lap. Would you advise having him still up this high rather than having him whatever's lower, comfortable? So he is his bum is actually. We can loosen it off. It you can just go means to the pump. Yeah. You can carry him when you're out and about rude. and then he's safe. But do you, you think go, you'd darling. feel safe going around with him? You could let go. I you think can enjoy so. the ride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On for a day out. Woo woo. <laughs> okay, next up, the other baby. Todd and I each have one of these. Amazing. Mine is, of course, cream. Mm -hmm. And has this great. It's the linen as well, isn't it? So this is the Omni 360 oh. model. And the Omni part of it stands for outward mode, no insert. Because the original Ergo 360 needed a big chunky duvet-like insert thing, ah. which was really awkward, really inconvenient and rubbish in summer because babies were overheating their front and center. Mm. So they ditched that and they created the Omni. And when you're putting this on your waist, make sure it's actually on your waist. I get lots of clients who come in with it on their hips and it's like, that's not where your waist is. <laughs> your see, waist is up here. See, I had this debate with Claudia. Yeah. Because I thought she was wearing hers too low. Do um, you want to pull? Yes, to tighten. If that's tricky, you can do it on the front and spin it around. There you go, that's it. Well oh, done. Oh no. That's all right, we'll do those up again at the end, it's okay. So you want it to feel comfortably tight, but not so tight that when you sit down, it's gonna cut you in half. So now, we get the bucket ready, okay? So Ergo Baby has this patented bucket seat that you drop the bum into. A lot of people put the bum on top of the waistband, and then the carrier comes up too high on their baby's back. It's ah. especially common with newborns. It does my head in when I see it on Instagram. But yeah, so what you do instead is you're gonna drop his bum in there. Did you wanna practice with Dave first? Or do you wanna Come go on, Dave. Yeah, Jump okay. on in. So drop pop that down. So there's Dave. So then one hand under the thing, let his bum sink into the bucket. That's it, and then that will sit perfectly at his neck. Look at that, beautiful. Then you're gonna slip one arm through each strap. And then if you turn round, I'll fit this to you. What we want is for these straps to sit like a capital H on your back. So it can either go up here at the top or we can have it lower down there. So we'll try it at the top first and then you tighten these. The idea being that once it's then the right size, it'll be comfy and you only have to do that clip. You don't have to adjust anything else. So wait, when I take it off, I should use both hands. Yeah. Like so, and then I... Just slip the arms out. So we always slip. take them off the reverse of how we've put them on. So you undo the clip, take your arms out, pop them down, then do your waistband. <laughs> it's not the most convenient to move, to do, yeah. to live. Yeah. To be. So, as I said at the beginning, large. buckle carriers are like jeans. You've got to find the right pair that fit you and where the tailoring yeah. matches your body. When I'm doing buckle carrier fittings, I usually start with an Ergo Omni 360 and another carrier called an Integra, which I do have one with me, because they're completely opposite. And I think it would work better with your back because it's a cross strap carrier. A very soft panel. As you can see, there's virtually no waistband mm. and the straps cross over on the back instead. It will be more comfortable on your waist. Yeah. It will put a layer between your ribs and him, which I know you're worried about, and it will cross over on the back. Fab. So if you take Dave 
and pop him on your chest where you want him to end yeah, up. Okay. Yeah, with, maybe with your breastbone, get him a bit more central. If you put him in wonky, he'll stay wonky. There we go. One arm under him like a shelf, perfect. Other arm under the carrier and then smooth it up over his back. Get this arm out from underneath and then throw one strap over each shoulder. That's it, well done. And then if you reach around behind you, grab the opposite side. That's it, you wanna pull it down to get rid of the slack. Well done, bring it around. I'll shorten it for you because it was set to me. You don't need it that big. There we go. Flip it in. Lovely. Pull it back to tighten. It is a tricky angle, which is why we've got the front adjust as well. So let me set this up. There. Right, so if you now pull that forwards instead, then you never have to pull it back again. So when you take it off, all you do is loosen that and then undo the buckle. So when you come to put it in, you clip it in and then just pull it right. forwards. So you never have to pull it back. That's it. And if you turn around through, just double check the slack. I think you've nailed it though. Excellent. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's completely missing both of your shoulder blades. You don't have to worry about anything on them. Because it has no padding on the waistband, it sits really neatly oh. on your waist. This feels good. I can slide it further up your shoulders. You can you slide it up if like... you need to. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's better. Yeah, cool. All of them are weight tested up mm -hmm. to like five or six stone, but that's the point at which the carrier rips apart. Doesn't mean you should be wearing a child that size no. in that carrier. There are toddler carriers, there are preschool carriers, there are buckle carriers that go up to 10 years old. When he gets bigger, just get a bigger carrier. <laughs> Definitely not carrying a 10 year old. <laughs> It's the most popular carrier in my library. I have 10 of them available for hire and that was the only one left in. I generally, it's one in, one out. There's always a waiting list for them. Whereas all my ergos sit there because people try them on and then they try on other stuff and they realize that whilst pretty, the ergo isn't necessarily the best fit for everyone. Well, I'm impressed. All right, cool. so. This is possibly the most beautiful one. It is super pretty. The scalloping. It's so gorgeous. The Look at seashell. This. It, it looks is... like a seashell. It's got like these adorable cherries on. It is absolutely adorable. Beautiful. Uh, however, <laughs> it does have quite an issue. Mm. I cannot, for the life of me, take it off once it's on because mm -hmm. it has these three-way claspy thingamajiggies. Yeah, so quite a few brands use a tri-lock buckle. Um, That's a much better name Yeah, than the <laughs> claspy thingy. And it's called the tri-lock uh, because it has three points that click when you put them on. Normal buckles just have the two sides, but the tri-lock has three, which because of that means you need two hands to do it. Some are easier than others. It depends where on the body it goes, but with a big child here and a clip there, my arms aren't long enough to reach around more than a newborn to be able to do up and undo that clip. So they're not hugely practical in that way. Uh, I always have like a medium level of hand muscle atrophy mm -hmm. so not great like yeah buckles with two bits not best for me anyway mm. and then you're adding another section yeah <laughs> what yeah i have a lot of parents um who come in with arthritis or with carpal tunnel syndrome tri lock buckles are just not very convenient at all despite how beautiful the carrier is so we're gonna try this one out, see how we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got the basics of this yeah, one. Yeah, it's the same as all the others. This is it, once you've done a couple, then you know where it should sit on your torso. Right. But the waistband is tri-lock as well. So th there's there's a second reason for the tri-lock being on the waist is it means you have to have put your baby down before you undo the waist buckle. Um, and it did start following a few lawsuits in America where people were holding baby undid waist and then drop babies so they didn't drop the carrier. So they, I know, so they created the tri-lock so that you needed both hands to undo it. So you had to put the baby down before the carrier. Right, let's pop them in. Like. Let's see what happens. It's got like a triple, oh, that's why. So it's got a double loop in each buckle. So you can't just slide it. Oh. It's got a double Pass. You can see inside it's got one, two. Yeah, you can't even pull that to tighten it up. Oh no! Literally, that's not budging. How are you meant to do that by yourself? Right, no, that is right. No, no just no. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. It's not happening. Oh god, wait. You gotta spin it. I can't take it off. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. That's the problem. Just. Oh, there you go. Freedom. Okay. I couldn't do it on you as a professional who's been doing this for five years. And that says a lot. That's the first time it's ever happened. Oh dear. <laughs> So there you go, there are my thoughts on all of the different slings. Now let me know in the comments which one was your favourite, which type of sling do you love, what works best for your body. Obviously we are all completely different and what works for me maybe didn't work for you. Hopefully by making this video I'm just sharing a bit of information that someone else might be able to find useful. And thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description and use code JESSICA for 83% off Surfshark plus four extra months for free. And I will see you in my next video. Mwah.